Hi, welcome back. It's, uh, it's late May, gorgeous time of year. It's been a cold spring, but nonetheless, uh, the garden's looking beautiful. And I, I would be quite happy to live in May and June all year round, if that could somehow be arranged. Anyway, I thought you might like to come on a little wander around my semi-wild garden to see what's happening, see what we can see, spot a bit of wildlife if we're lucky and maybe get some inspiration for things you might do in, in your garden to, to make it more nature friendly, to invite more beasties in to live with you. So I'm going to start by my house. I think we might as well start with the bee hotels just over here. So let's go and have a look, see what's happening. I've got bee hotels dotted all around the garden, but this is the biggest concentration. All sorts of ones I've been given and made. Including this one I was recently sent. Look at that. Rather beautifully painted bee on the front. Uh, so it, it's, it's not super busy at the moment, but you can see lots of holes have been, have been filled up. Uh, mainly red mason bees, we've had a few blue mason bees. And uh, there's been a few parasites hanging around, cookie bees and so on. Uh, you never know what you're going to see. I'd love to have a coffee and just sit here and see what's going on. This, this way over here is a, is a new design. I'll tell you more about it in another video if it works. But this is a, that's a, a block of clay with holes in it, which I'm hoping will attract hairy-footed flower bees to nest. Wouldn't that be exciting? I've never had them nest in a hotel. Uh, apparently they, they like being able, something malleable that they can work with um, to nest in. So that, that's fingers crossed, hey? Uh, that would be cool. Oh, there's a mason bee just dived in one of the holes. Okay, let's go around here, see what else there is. All looking rather nice. Forget me not, still going. They've been looking glorious for months now, and the leaping's about to come out. The allium's looking quite nice now. Top knot lavender, Spanish lavender, into flower. No bees on it. Where are the bees today? It has been such a quiet year. There's uh, been hard, uh, just a f the first few workers, which is really late for for this time of year. This is quite cool stuff. You get lots of little flies and small bees on it. Mexican flea bane. It flowers and flowers and flowers all day long. Uh, around here, got my pond. It's looking rather manky this year. I don't know what's going on with this red stuff on the surface. If anyone's got any ideas, let me know. I'm sure there's no pollution getting in here. The yellow flag iris, look, over there. It's just beginning to come out. That's going to look glorious in, in a few days' time, and the bees really go for that. Especially common carders seem to love it. On the other hand, my rock rose at the back there looks like it's dying, which is a bit odd. Never mind. I love Herb Robert. This is a gorgeous little geranium family plant. Beautiful. So, what else have we got? Uh, if we go around here, we've got lots of garlic mustard. This, which uh, is the food plant, or one of two common food plants of orange tip butterflies, which are quite common in the garden. The other one's Lady's Smock, which I've got some of. And there may well be some eggs. They lay them on the flower spikes. And the caterpillars like to actually eat the, eat the seed pods as they grow. But, uh, this little patch here was, was meant to be my fern garden. But the ferns have been over, sort of swamped out by um, cow parsley and garlic mustard. But don't you just love cow parsley? It doesn't flower for long. But it's so fluffy and frothy and cheerful, spring-like. Gorgeous stuff. Oh look, there are a few ferns over the back there, poking through. Anyway, it's looking a bit chaotic, jungle-like, but, but lovely. Oh look, why is this interesting little fly here? Don't ask me to tell you anything exciting about it, because I'm afraid 
I have no idea what that is. Okay, let's continue on round, shall we? What else have we got? Buttercups, it's just out there everywhere. Gorgeous things. And we're now around the front of the house. And <laughs> this, more jungle really. My wife despairs at my gardening approach, bless her. Um, so this, in the middle there, was a flower bed and it was surrounded by lawn. So I, I dug the lawn up and sowed it with a wildflower seed mix and I can see the um, ribwort plantain is in flower, which is rather nice. This stuff's a ribwort plantain. Um, uh, and there's lots of oxide daisies coming through and knapweed going to flower. So it's done pretty well. The middle of the flower bed is uh, overrun with some sort of perennial sunflower, helianthus, which flowers in late summer, big sunflower kind of yellow flowers. Bees love it. Not really part of my, a natural part of my meadow, but, uh, but I think collectively I think it looks quite cool. What's not to love? In the middle there's a little, I love damsons. Um, it's a little damson tree to add. I've got now four, I think, damson trees dotted around the garden. It'll be a while before that one produces any fruit, but thankfully I've got one mature tree that gives me loads. They're so full of flavour, damsons. See in the distance there's some aquilegia poking through and some ragged robin, I think I can just see. I don't suppose you can spot that. Anyway, let's carry on round here. These hardy geraniums, oh, actually before, let's have a... I've got lots of different hardy geraniums, which um, bumbles really like. Um, this isn't perhaps their favorite, but it's gorgeous and it just spreads. It's really nice ground cover, trouble free. Uh, this is this is bush fetch, which is a native wildflower, which is really good for bumblies. And it just rampages around. And so, bugle down here, don't you just oh look this look at that big fat. See this really late for a queen carder to be on the wing. She's a beauty. Oh, I think I may have frightened her off. Ah, look at these alliums. No bees present, but, but they look lovely. And you can see there's foxgloves that are going to be flowering soon. Here's some lady smock I mentioned earlier, the, the other food plant of the uh, orange tip butterflies. Uh, valerian, this, uh, this is lovely stuff. This is really good for attracting hummingbird hawk moths. You get butterflies and moths on it of all sorts, but every, every summer uh, you get, we get this migration of hummingbird hawk moths coming up from southern Europe and they love to drink nectar from these tubular flowers. These are some little figs I grew from cuttings, coming along nicely. Oh, there we go, there's a little honeybee, pigging out on some nectar, covered in pollen. Dicentra here is just going over, but it's a beautiful flower. Oh. Say hello, Poppy. This is my fearsome hound. Okay, let's go off up the garden. Oh, let's look, Bistort. This is a good one for the bees. From a distance, it's easily mistaken for an orchid but uh, very easy to grow, really, really easy to grow. And uh, for my money, one of the loveliest garden plants. Chives, oh, this is a, 
uh, ascabius that's just coming into flower. Chives is a great herb. If you were just going to grow one thing in a pot and that's all you had room for, I might grow chives. Is it um, good for cooking? Really easy to grow. Nice for bumblebees and beautiful. Right, let's go this way, see what we can find. Uh, long wort here. This was great for the hairy footy fl footed flower bees, but I think they're finished for the year. And we've got some different types of comfrey just coming into flower. Comfrey is just, I plant it everywhere. I've got tons of it at uh, various different species. Uh, that's the kind of commonest variety. Bocking 14, uh, I believe that is. And I do have a lot of it, but the bees love it. Doing very well at growing cow parsley this year. And nettles and docks. <laughs> oh, look at the speedwell. This is, this is beautiful. It just spreads all over the, the, the shorter bits of turf. And behind it, growing around my, one of my, this is a Howgate Wonder apple tree which is just being pollinated by a big fat queen cardra again. Uh, so the, the blue stuff, this is a Caucasian comfrey. Flowers a bit earlier than common comfrey, um, but really good for bees and beautiful. Bit of a thug though, it does spread all over the place. This is what, my biggest brush pile, uh, rather than having bonfires, I just pile up any brush. Chuck a bit of grass clippings on top. It makes a, looks awful, <laughs> but it makes a great home for grass snakes and hedgehogs and, well, I, I say hedgehogs. We've never had a hedgehog in the garden. I've got two acres, beautiful, well, beautiful. Um, I think it's beautiful uh, garden. And uh, never seen a sign of a hedgehog in 10 years of living here, sadly. Oh well. Should be ideal for them, shouldn't it? I cut these paths through, so I, most of the garden is pretty rough, kind of orchard, long grass that gets cut once a year. But I cut paths through so I can get about and uh, um, and it kind of makes it, it works, I think. It sort of looks almost tidy. Let's just look here. This is uh, Loganberry um, with a honeybee on it. And uh, I've got some in a fruit cage, which is, uh, keeps the birds out so that we actually get some Loganberries. But this is, this is for the bees and the birds. Okay, let's continue on round. These are my old Bramleys. These are trees I inherited. Finished flowering for the year, but uh, it produced an amazing crop. There's two of them next to each other here. Produce an amazing crop of apples every year. Good for cider and cooking, and even eating if you leave them to get really ripe. Oh, let's have a look down here. This is, this is the nearest I've yet got to what I might call a wildflower meadow. And I'm very excited this year because I've got more yellow rattle coming up than I've ever had before. This is, this is yellow rattle, which is it's called a hemiparasite. It's an annual plant, but its roots tap into grass roots and suck the sort of, it's like a vampire. It sucks the, um, the sap from them. It reduces the vigour of the grass, which helps to keep the grasses down and leaves more room for wildflowers. That's, that's the theory anyway. The grass still looks pretty vigorous in my garden, but, uh, but there's lots of yellow rattle now, so I'm hoping slowly it'll change over time. Now up here is the most exciting thing I've found this year in the garden. Oh, 
Before I show you that though, let's just sidetrack over here to my Earwig Hotel. See a separate YouTube video for more details, but it's basically um, meant to provide a home for earwigs to encourage them to thrive and eat all the aphids on my apple trees. Not that I seem to have many aphids on my apple trees, but then hopefully that's the earwigs. So this was what I wanted to show you. Forgive the twigs. Right in the middle of the path, I nearly mowed this flat, is my first orchid. I'm so excited by this. I don't know how it got here. It's going to flower. It's got a bud on it. I think it's a common spotted orchid. There's just the one I've searched and searched and searched, and I cannot find another in the garden anywhere. There could be one hidden in the long grass. But anyway, I'm hoping that this will spread. The twigs are to stop me standing on it, or um, hopefully the dog from eating it, or whatever. Um, I was a bit worried that some rabbits might eat it, but I think they don't like orchids. So hopefully it will thrive and multiply, and that would be very exciting. Ah. Right, let's go and have a look at the veggies. Uh, this was a, a straw bale bed, compost in the middle with bales around the outside, which is kind of disintegrated. But it's growing some mighty healthy spuds. And I won't talk you through the whole veggie patch, you might get quite bored. But anyway, it's, it's that time of year when lots of things have gone out, like the runner beans and so on, and they're just starting to get going. Lots of squashes, leeks, onions. The rhubarb's gone really well this year. Fantastic, we more than we know what to do with. Potatoes are all coming up. There's some parsnips coming into flower over there, which I, there are a few from last year. That The flowers are really attractive to uh, quite a range of pollinators, and I collect the seeds, because parsnip seeds don't last more than a year. There's no point using old seeds. You need fresh ones, so I collect my own cheaper than uh, buying them every year. My Jerusalem artichokes are shooting up in the distance. Uh, they are the easiest of vegetables to grow. The fencing is to keep the army of rabbits out, which uh, I'm afraid is, it's a kind of tidal wave of rabbits. They would just eat everything if I let them into the veggie patch. I feel a bit like Mr. McGregor sometimes. Uh, this is for having a go at growing globe artichoke. I'm not sure I'll, I even enjoy globe artichoke particularly, but uh, we'll see how we get on. These are the Jerusalem artichokes. If you've never grown them, oh, I don't know if you can hear me over that wind. Crikey, what's going on? Um, if you've never tried growing them, uh, give it a go. They just come up from tubers. So easy to grow. They don't seem to have any pest problems at all. The, the, they grow eight feet tall comfortably. Um, have, they're a sunflower relative. Um, anyway, you just, just keep a few tubers back, just like potatoes. Store them over the winter and plant them in the early spring and up they come again. We get wheelbarrows full of artichokes. They do make you fart, so watch out. Okay. Little satellite bed of potatoes and uh, these are okay outside of the fence because of course rabbits don't eat, they won't eat potatoes, the leaves are poisonous. There's uh, a cardoon at the back there. I, you can eat the stems, but they're tough as old boots. I really don't get it. Oh, here, um, this this is may one day feature in another video. It's supposed to be a bee bank. Um, it's just a pile of clay dug up from this. I kind of made a depression and piled the clay in an arc, which is roughly south facing. So that should be lovely and warm provide a, an amazing kind of microhabitat for ground nesting bees and perhaps hairy footed flower bees to nest. I built it 18 months ago and last year I had a, a small number of 
uh, andrinas, uh, my, uh, mining bees, um, but not very many. Um, I'm hoping numbers will build up over time. I keep strimming it to, to keep, cause stop it getting just overgrown. Oh, there's one, there's one. And if you can see it, I'm gonna frighten it off. Got big yellow. Now we'll see how close we can get. Got yellow legs, it's um, carrying pollen, so it's a female. She's probably nesting somewhere close by. I don't know if you can see her. Can you see her? There she is, right in the middle of the screen. Just sitting there. Maybe got a bit cold. Anyway, that was exciting. Nope, oh, she's flown off. Let's go and look at the fruit cage over here. It's my old little greenhouse. Oh, and a, a satellite pond I made uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, here's the fruit cage. Uh, it's a mix of, we've got, what have we got in here? We've got joster berries. We've got red currants, black currants, gooseberries. We've got Logan berries, tay berries, boysenberries, raspberries, and a few strawberries. Oh, and some honey berries. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know that we've got it. Um, but uh, they're great. We get tons and tons of our own delicious soft fruit. And of course, the, the flowers are all good for, for bees. Uh, all, pretty much all soft fruit. I can't think of any that aren't pollinated by bees and popular with bees. You might be able to hear my chickens over here. Let's go and have a look. Hello, girls. I'll come and feed you in a minute. You should have plenty of food left anyway, but I'll check. These are kind of rescue hens. I'm not supposed to call them rescue hens because that implies that they needed rescuing from the battery farm they were in, which offends some people. But anyway, they were going to be killed at uh, about 20 months, which is what normally happens with hens um, in industrial farming. But there's this lovely organization uh, that rehomes them. £2.50 each they cost me, and they've laid hundreds of eggs each. Um, Fresh Start for Hens, I should say, is the name of the organisation. Look at these lovely girls. They were almost bald when they arrived. Beautiful now. Okay, let's go back towards the house. Most of the fruit trees have finished flowering, but this is the last one to flower every year, Dabinet. It's a, a cider apple. Has the bitterest fruits you've ever eaten. Good for cider, but um, absolutely inedible. Uh, one of my various compost heaps over in the distance there. And another of my older brash piles. This is one I'm going to rot right down and then uh, use as compost. Uh, where are we going? Let's go. Let's go this way. Excuse the uh, trampoline. Not the most beautiful sight and <laughs> highly dangerous without any protective netting or padding. But hey ho, my youngest son still loves it. Oh, look at that campion flowering. I love red campion. Let's go and have a look. More of the blue comfrey and geraniums and all sorts of other things, but uh, look. So, the campions are unusual in that they're either male or female. Or most plants are hermaphrodites, but this is a male. So you can see the the pollen there. The females don't have the yellow pollen, but they have little sort of twirly white stigmas to catch the pollen. Oh look, there's a, a hairy shield bug. They're always here every year. If you can see, it's by my thumb, trying to hide. Now it's really hard to focus. Excuse me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Where's it gone? <laughs> oh, excuse my hopeless camera work. Oh, there it is, look. Get it on my hand, then we can have a proper look. 
a hairy shield bug. Um, I'll try and get the camera to focus on it. That should be there. Uh, quite distinctive patterning. Uh, seem to be very common around here. Anyway, pop oh, I'm sure it'll climb back up. You may be wondering what these are. Well, you won't be wondering. <laughs> I'm sure it's very obvious what they are. You probably think this looks horrendously ugly, but uh, I had these installed in the winter and we're now, we're now carbon negative as far as electricity is concerned. We're exporting to the grid quite a lot. So not only does it save money, but I can feel slightly more comfortable that my carbon footprint is much lower. And it doesn't really fit in a wild garden, I suppose, but I've got used to it and I kind of like them now. I've planted a, a hedge to screen them from the house so that they kind of, they won't be quite so obvious. And there's lots of stuff living all around them. Um, I'm going to explore what can be grown underneath them. The yellow rattle here. <laughs> got tons of yellow rattle. I don't know how well it's going to go, but it still seems to be growing fine. Um, so uh, hopefully I can grow interesting stuff underneath and it's, it's not therefore taking up too much space. It could be occupied with nature and it's helping to save the planet. It doesn't seem like such a bad thing to me. Right, uh, what else have we got? My little hedge is a mix of hawthorn, hornbeam and beech with a little bit of rosemary on the end. This is a quince tree just coming to the end of flowering but I've got we've got plums, damsons, pears, lots of different apples, mulberries, uh, quince, apricot and peach I think. I think that's it. These quinces are one of the more, oh and um, medlar. Medlar's over there. If you can see those big white flowers. Anyway, um, I love quince. Uh, they're really good for cooking. Um, you have to cook them, you can't eat them fresh. And I think they make really nice, nice trees. Anyway, let's go finish off, have a quick peek in my greenhouse. I love my greenhouse. It might seem a little bit large and it's slightly chaotic, but I grow tons and tons of tomatoes in there. And what, have, what else have we got? Sweet peppers, chili peppers, agretti, which is a weird salad vegetable. That's, that's a weird salad, leaf salad. Uh, the strawberries are going on, coming on beautifully. We've had loads of strawberries. Uh, we get cauliflowers. Um, uh, did I mention lettuce? Had a great vine along the back uh, which produces tons and tons of grapes. Uh, really sweet, they're quite small. Um, and so on and so on. Carrots over there, climbing French beans over there. I love it. I spend hours in here in the winter when it's too cold to be outside or chicken it down with rain. Oh, one more thing just to have a quick look at. So, there's, there's some rhodes and azaleas. I know rhodes aren't everyone's cup of tea. Uh, some rhododendron ponticum, it can be an invasive weed, but this isn't an invasive strain. And the bees really like it. Uh, what I wanted to show you was this, if you can hear me. Whoa, the bumblebee that was on it's just flown away. But this is, I think this is lovely. Thalictrum. Aquilegia folium um, or meadow rue. Yeah, there's a couple of honeybees buzzing around, isn't that just a wonderful flower? A lovely fluffy purple. Oh, oh another bumble just come through. This I this is sort of my experimental bed, growing things that someone's told me are good for bees. To test them out, all sorts of odd things coming through here. This uh, broom is definitely good for bees. It's just starting to flower, and. Uh, it's going to be absolutely stunning in a couple of days. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Do join me again. If you, in a month or two, I'll do another tour of the garden, if I remember. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want uh, updates when I do publish something. And uh, have a lovely day. Bye.